Welcome to the first Amgen Teach MOOC. My name is Christian Bertsch. I'm professor of science education in Vienna, in Austria. At the beginning of module one, you have experienced an inquiry process. The aim of this part is to get a better understanding about the concept of inquiry-based teaching and learning. When you are reading reform documents dealing with science education, on a European level as well as on a national level, all of them are calling for a reversal of science teaching from mainly deductive, teacher-centered teaching towards inquiry-based teaching. But what exactly do we mean when we are talking about inquiry learning? Not surprisingly, in the world of science education there is not a current unified view of precisely how inquiry-based learning should be defined. Additionally, we use other buzzwords like discovery learning or problem-based learning. One definition of inquiry-based learning is that it mimics scientific practice. But what is scientific practice? Some researchers, like the physicists here in CERN, they make experiments. Others, like Charles Darwin, are good observers. We, as science education researchers, we work with questionnaires or interviews. So science has many methods of investigation, but all are based on the notion that some form of evidence is the basis for a defensible conclusion. Additionally, these various methods, they follow certain criteria. For instance, they use fair testing when they do experiments, we report about the methods we use, and the results should be replicable. Scientists make observations about the natural world. Scientists make measurements. For example, they measure the atmospheric carbon dioxide level. Scientists look for patterns in their data and they come to evidence-based conclusions. The next step is that they communicate their findings and they try to convince a critical audience with good arguments. Well, and sometimes we fail to convince a critical audience. To be very clear, science is not about knowing the truth. It's about looking at data and coming to evidence-based conclusions. It's about distinguishing between facts and opinion. And the same is true for inquiry-based learning. Inquiry-based learning is evidence-based learning, where the students engage actively in the learning process with emphasis on observation and experience. The students practice and they develop the skills of systematic observation to obtain evidence and they participate in collaborative group work, they communicate and they use arguments. The role of the teacher is to scaffold and guide the learning, to facilitate the, nego the negotiation of ideas and to highlight criteria for formulating classroom knowledge. When we look at the research data, it is quite clear that inquiry-based learning raises the interest in science. But the question is, does it also foster conceptual understanding? My colleague Daphne Minner, she did a comparative meta-analysis of 140 studies on inquiry-based learning. And she came to the conclusion that if the students get the opportunity to engage in active thinking and are subsequently asked to draw conclusions from their data, they are more likely to understand the inherent scientific content compared to more teacher-centered methods. But she also noted that focusing exclusively on hands-on aspects does neither foster conceptual understanding nor the understanding about the nature of science. So the key to successful science teaching and learning is that we link hands-on activities with minds-on activities. At the beginning of this MOOC, you experience an inquiry activity on spoiled jam. Attached to this presentation, you can find a list of important features of inquiry-based learning. I'd like you to have a look at this list and reflect on your own inquiry process at the beginning of this MOOC. Which aspects of inquiry learning were covered in the activity with the spoiled jam? And which aspects weren't covered in this activity? More than 100 years ago, the science education reform on John Dewey wrote, 
Science has been taught too much as an accumulation of ready-made facts and not enough as a method of thinking. And 100 years later, this quotation is still true. Our teaching focuses too much on the transmission of factual knowledge. But what are the skills our students need in the 21st century? Replication of ready-made facts? Not really. We need young adults that are good at creative problem solving, critical reflection of information, communication and collaboration, distinction between facts and opinion, and media and information literacy. And our research shows that inquiry-based learning actively addresses these skills better than teacher-centered and deductive teaching. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you will enjoy the various inputs on this MOOC on inquiry-based learning.